Hello there. My name is Margot Fink and I write adventure stories for young teens. I would like to introduce you to my latest book, The Revenge of Thelma Hill, and it's available on Kindle. When young Franny and her twin brother moved to Oregon with their dad, Franny has no thought of ghosts, haunted houses, trapping a killer, or the giant arachnid familiar that lives in their creepy basement. And a missing mum and sibling rivalry just adds to her scary problems. So, snuggle up with someone you trust while I read a few pages that just might give you some goosebumps. Are you ready? Good. Chapter 1 of The Revenge of Thelma Hill Hoblin, Goblin, Killer Ghost Which of these scares you the most? Franny James often dreamt about her missing mother. Nothing warm and fuzzy, of course. More like reruns of a half-forgotten TV show. It was happening again. Her hands clenched as she slept. Would Mum smile? Just one loving smile, please. She wondered why her mother always stayed back, her face a distant blur. Wait, this time was different. Her mum was walking closer, pale hair swinging about her shoulders, her opal, open face clearer with every step. Warm brown eyes gazed at Franny with affection. Click. Like turning off the TV, the mother dream went blank. A bone-snapping chill penetrated Franny's sleep. Choking awake, she sat bolt upright, muddle-headed, longing to return to the dream and her mother. Oh, Mum, she whispered, where are you? Why did you go away? Was it my fault? Her mum had slipped out of their lives years ago, yet Franny still longed for her. She wanted to know why, after that first year, her mum never answered their letters. Tears pricked her eyelids. Ice cold, Franny tugged the blankets around her. A sudden chill wind blew through the room, surprising her. But how? The window was closed. Purr! Franny tugged the comforter higher. Her sleep muddled thoughts rambled. Lacy moonlight on the carpet. Hmm. Dark shadows. Wind. She was definitely sure the window was closed. A startling grey mist writhed deep within the shadows near the foot of her bed. Franny caught her breath. A gaunt figure emerged from the swirling mist. Gathering grey veils around it, the figure floated toward her. Half hidden in veils, it halted at the foot of her bed. The figure pushed in and out, in and out, as if gasping for air. Franny forgot to breathe. No, 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 she whispered. Ghosts are not real. A moan, high-pitched and eerie, came from the apparition's gaping mouth. Franny caught, her mouth dry, her heart skipped a beat. Wake up, she told herself, ducking beneath the covers. She counted to twenty, then flung back the covers. Oh no, it's still here. The figure now clearer was wrapped in veils, grey and translucent, like a spider would, would spin. It drifted closer and hovered. Its bony arms reached out, closer, closer. This isn't happening. Another blast of wind from nowhere. Icy fingers stabs, stabbed at Franny's flesh. A dusting of frost, crisp, and white covered every surface in her room. 
Franny tried to scream, yet barely a gurgle escaped, squeezed between her chattering teeth. Scooting back until her head banged the headboard, she cowered, unwilling to believe in the nightmare before her. The apparition had her trapped. Franny watched bug-eyed as the skeleton moved beneath the folds of the spider-like veils. Long white hair floated around its skull. The only living thing about the creature was its dark and luminous eyes. They held her gaze, impossible to look away. Ice replaced the blood in Franny's arms and legs. I have to wake up. Nightmares go away when you wake, right? She pinched her arm hard. It hurt, but the grey-gowned skeleton did not go away. Bizarre thoughts crowded into Franny's head. Thoughts that did not come from her. Thoughts that whispered, trust me, please, stay calm. Holy bee-boggers, this thing is plugged into my brain. No way, she said aloud, no flippin' way. The skeletal figure floated closer, its cobwebby gown swirled across the covers. Bony hands clasped it, gazed at Franny with intense eyes, as if reading her mind. Its mouth never opened, yet a gazillion words zoomed into her head. Confusion and fear, plus a pounding headache, hit her instantly. Franny gasped, if you don't stop, the top of my head will fly off. Moaning, she rocked back and forth, hands pressed over both ears. Please, oh please. Slowly, bit by bit, the presence withdrew from her mind, leaving only the echo of fear and confusion. What would come next? Franny didn't dare move. Then, at a snail's pace, deliberate and measured, words began to flow into her brain. Help me, Franny James, I have waited many years for you. You are the one. Franny found her voice. Who? What are you? What do you want from me? I want revenge. I want my killer to pay for what he did to me. I want to have this half-life. Go beyond to the great reward. A gust of cold wind rattled her picture of Madonna and whipped the curtains into a frenzy. Maybe I'm not dreaming. Franny trembled from head to foot. The grey veils frothed around the skeleton's figure. More words flowed into Franny's brain. You have the power, Franny James, only you. There are many astral veils between life and death. Your power can help me out of the limbo I have endured. In addition, my power can help you. Reflect on this. You will need my help. Again, the spidery veils swelled and frothed faster and faster, quickly hiding the bony frame within. Its hypnotic eyes glowed, then vanished into the mass of shadows behind the foot of her bed. Soon, Franny James, I will return soon. The words echoed inside Franny's head. She shuddered. Were the words a threat or a promise? The wind and frost vanished with the apparition. Wide-eyed, a fist crammed into her mouth. Franny peered into the corners of her room. Tentacles of fear squeezed her chest. She fought the urge to scream. This would never happen back home, she sobbed. I want to go back to Iowa. Tugging the comforter around her ears, Franny wedged her hands under her armpits to steady and warm them. Wow. Did you get a few goosebumps? <laughs> now... I want to let you into a little secret. Maybe, just maybe, 
The ghost is not the one Franny needs to be scared of. You see, the ghost is very like my mother. And she was a kind and loving lady. Smart too. But you'll have to read the rest of it for yourself. It's the only way you'll discover what happened to their mum, why the ghost of Thelma Hill needs Franny's help, and why a giant arachnid named Adolpha is on guard duty in their creepy basement. Oh, yes, and uh, how sneaky anonymous emails help them trap a killer. To read more of Thelma Hill, just go to Amazon Books. Type in Margot Fink, my name, M-A-R-G-O-T-F-I-N-K-E, and The Revenge of Thelma Hill will pop up along with my other books. Bye for now. Happy ghost hunting. <laughs>